it gets posture on your end. Today, let's talk about twink leveling. Whenever you're rerolling your second character, you obviously don't want to take forever to do that. You want to have a setup that's very reliable. You don't have to think about much. You just completely crush the campaign. And one of the setups that I love to run right now, besides deck stacker, is actually kinetic bolt of fragmentation with spell damage scaling. It is a level one skill. I just want to remind you because the original kinetic bolt is as well. And it is definitely not balanced around that because the conversion, which converts 100% of spell damage into 250% of attack damage, is not scaling with levels. It is a 250% right from the get-go, which is ridiculous because there are some leveling items that can take advantage of this and it's just kind of broken. With that said, there's a lot of setups that can currently absolutely crush the game from level one. In fact, there's a whole 140 new skills that all are balanced around its original version in terms of level requirement. So you could should definitely check out more skills than just Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation. I'm just going to show you what I used. What I especially like about this versus something like Deck Stacker, which I usually use for leveling, is that you can also shield charge around. It feels a lot faster. But let's get right into it. So the most important thing is I don't really have, I don't know, 100 different passive traits here. I basically just have an outline for the first few levels on the dead eye that I used. But whatever you class you use it on, you're basically scaling the same thing. You're scaling attack speed movement speed sometimes more multipliers especially if you are in the duelist region or in the ranger region you want precise technique but there's nothing inherent you need on the passive tree that really ties this to anything other than attack speed for feel good and also for extra damage i guess what you would also really like is a source of pierce but you can get that from anywhere for example i have multi-shot anointed right now but you can just as much annoying piercing shots. As well as that, if you want to see the full leveling run, I will link to the Twitch watt down below. I did it live on stream. So Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation has, as you can see right here, level requirement one. And as you can see as well, increases reductions to spell damage also apply to attack damage at 250% of value, which it's normally 250% with the quality. Turns out this is quite broken for a level one skill. Now, if you are a witch and you're leveling as a witch, you will see that you have quite a bit of upfront damage right here. It's completely insane. Also, you can go for some stuff like a dual wield and whatnot. But yeah, the witch area, very strong for it. Shadow area, strong. Ranger, strong. Duel is strong. And then these two are kind of like meh. Both Marauder. I mean, yeah. You can still get carried by the setup. But just in general, those four are more wanted. Sion is also very strong because even Sion gets some spell damage from the get-go. The skill shotguns, so if you stand next to a boss, it's literally going to just evaporate. You can scale additional projectiles. It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's just very good. Make sure that you have a little bit of projectile speed while leveling. If you are already in the ranger area and you get some projectile speed, for example, from long shot, then you can probably go for something like fork instead to make it longer. Or you have the mastery right here with 15% more proc speed. But otherwise, just use the support gem. Our main setup will be Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation plus GMP or earlier LMP. Do not go volley. GMP and LMP are way better. Faster attacks, just so it feels better. Faster projectiles or fork or pierce, whatever you need, depending on what you level. Inspiration will help out a little bit with the mana cost. And then Trinity. You can also go Life Tap. However, Life Tap will feel pretty awkward at times because it does take quite a bit of life for six link now when it comes to trinity this is something you kind of have to figure out for yourself because depending on what gear you have we're going to talk about it in a second it's going to be a little bit awkward just make sure that your resonance is constantly up so here as well right we're using precision because we are going for precise technique we don't anymore I already respect out of it because i went into strength stacker but you definitely want to go precise technique early. With that said, if you're leveling something like a witch or a marauder or anything like that, and you cannot get here or you don't want to go there, you can also opt for Lycosidae. It is a very easy shield to just throw into the build and you never have to think about accuracy again. Other than that, once again, depending on what you need for your Trinity, Herald of Ice or Herald of Thunder, you kind of have to fiddle around with that a little bit. But yeah, let's get into the juice. Let's get into the items. So we're looking for spell damage wherever we can. Life Sprig, just because it's a level 1 wand, we're obviously going to go into something better later. At level 12, you want to go into Ash Caller. It has very good attack speed. It is a carved one, 1.5 attack speed, and it has flat damage and a little bit of cover enemies in Ash. So that's very nice. And then at level whatever, probably around about 30, 40, make sure that you have a wand with 1.5 base attack speed. It's probably going to be an engraved wand and just try to get as much flat damage as possible and also attack speed. I don't remember, I think it was level 35 or 37 whenever you can start rolling 
tier one attack speed. But if you get that, you can just all spam into it or you can just buy it from the market. There's often leveling ones like that on. I think I paid like a chaos for this one. And this will basically carry you all the way to maps. As for gloves, Dodris Tenure gives you 100% spell damage, which is 250% increased damage at level 12. It also gives you Int, which depending on what you're leveling is huge, and it's going to alleviate a lot of pressure on your gear. For example, you might not even have to go Primal Spirit or stuff like that. But in general, the only downside it has is cast speed, which we're not using anyways. These gloves are completely broken, and if you can get a good corruption on it, for example, attack speed, which doesn't increase your level requirement, make sure of that. For example, I think LE Weak is level 24. You can buy an LE Weak as well and then swap around however you want. I didn't feel like it was necessary, but it's definitely nice to have as well. Another thing that's nice to have while leveling that I didn't have later is if you're near a elemental mastery. In hindsight, I should have probably taken primeval force and then you get the hits have a 25% chance to treat enemy resistance as inverted. Incredible mastery. As for belt, and this is probably the most important one, a darkness and throne. Now the roll doesn't actually matter that much. Obviously, the more the better, but you're not going to pay five divine for a perfect one. I just had this one lying around. This one was like a divine. But yeah, you can start with like an 80, 90, whatever you want to pay. Usually I don't care because I can just sell it after I'm done with leveling. I don't really mind, but whatever floats your boat. In terms of jewels that you want, there's some crazy jewels. You have to make sure that on the trade website, you actually search for level requirement zero. And then what you're looking for is as much flat damage as humanly possible, either want damage or just general damage. That flat damage from level one on is completely busted and without it, I mean, the build has like, I don't know, a tenth of its damage. This is the most important one. The rest, I mean, sure, if you can get a little bit of res or like stats or this crazy thing that I found with like movement speed on it, more power to you, but the flat damage is the most important one. And depending on what that damage is, whether it's cold, fire, lightning, you might have to readjust with Herald of Ice, Herald of Thunder, added cold, added lightning, right? Just to make sure that your Trinity works. And then once you are level 30, 40-ish, you should change into new jewels. So these are now requirement level 35, which is the earliest cutoff point that I could find for good four stat jewels. You just search for this or you craft it yourself, whatever you want with fossils. But these are a huge damage increase. So once you reach that level, you want to replace your early level ones. If you don't want to deal with this, you can also go for Prism Weave, but Prism Weave is only level 25. And while it is very strong, it's nowhere near as strong as Darkness Inferno. So just keep that in mind. I would personally invest a little bit extra because if you're somebody who rerolls a lot like me, you might as well invest a little bit. Then in terms of boots, seven leak steps, nothing else really exists. In terms of rings, Chevron's Revelation, in my opinion, is the easiest way to fix your mana forever. Sure, you can go Thieves Torment, but then you're missing out on Replica Tassalios. You can also get this one up from 40 mana region per second to 48 if you catalyze it. It is a ridiculous ring that basically completely invalidates any mana cost you need. And in my opinion, it's better than running a life tap because it's just so much cozier not to lose life constantly. Replica Tassalio put elemental damage modifier quality onto this. It's completely broken. What can I say? It's a ton of damage. Career Ward, one thing I don't see that many people doing, I guess, is going for speed catalysts. Obviously, Career Ward is a no-brainer. It has projectile speed, movement speed, projectile damage. It's just very strong. But you can even go from 10 movement speed to 12 and from 30 to 36 projectile speed because the catalysts are actually quite cheap to slay. For Anoint, once again, this depends. Multi-shot is, in my opinion, the best Anoint from the get-go, you have four projectiles. That is completely busted. But if you're on the other side of the tree and you cannot reach the pierce at all, then, uh, yeah, I would just go uh, piercing shots. I personally actually leveled with Ricochet for a little bit. It's pretty nice to do. But yeah, piercing shots is a good annoyance as well. Then our helmet is the second payoff. Now, I was not aware that Ozenovs is level 8. I was not aware. We don't care about the trigger. It is 60% spell damage at level 8 and 15% increased attack speed. That is bonkers. It's insane. So once you have level 8, you put on an Azimnus mark. 60% increased damage is actually 150% increased damage for Kinetic Bolt. And then you have Dodris Tenure on top. You get another 250% increased damage. It's just busted. Now, when it comes to body armor, your best bet is 1,000 ribbons. If you get 1,000 ribbons with like 6 white sockets or something, I don't even know what that costs right now. But that would be the GG. Yeah, there's not even one up right now. The one reason I don't like it is because if it doesn't have white socket, it's going to be annoying juggling around. I don't want to chrome all the time. And I didn't feel like I needed the damage. A tabby with, I mean, increased damage implicit would be very nice to have. 
it's just the easiest, I guess. Now, as for the new ascendancies, basically off of the Magi is just the best. You get 30% movement speed if you have no sockets in your boots. So make sure that is true at all times. Other than that, you can play around with tinctures. Tinctures are usually high item requirement for the good ones, so you can just play around with them. They're not that important. Now, your first off of the Magi, you can just get by following yellow trails yourself if you want to. You can just try in every zone. If you see a yellow trail, you follow it, and you probably have like a 1 in 3, 1 in 4 chance to encounter the vendor, and then you automatically get off of the Magi. 30% movement speed, basically done. I would start roundabout in Act 2. Yeah, it's going to be easy. If you want more points than that, there's actually a better strat. By the way, you can also share this with people. So if a friend of yours is also leveling and he finds one, you just get to his portal and you both get it. So that's pretty cool. But what I wanted to say is if you actually want to go into tinctures later and you don't want to respec into charms, in that case, what you can do is, or what people already do, is in Act 10, you go to Desecrated Chambers. It's basically the region before you get to fight Kitava, where you have to find the staff, blah, blah, blah. Now, the reason this zone is so good is because basically always right here, you're going to have the Viridian Wildwood and you can fish for the 4,000 mobs. You can just remake this instance over and over again. It's just the most efficient that a lot of people have found. And you also have to fight these, um, these bosses, right? These mini bosses. And then you get your third and fourth point and your fifth and sixth point. The last point will be probably in maps. I actually don't remember when you can face the boss but you will have to do the boss for that. Once again, you can share it with people though. But yeah, the POB is not exactly super filled out because it really depends on what you want to do. For example, I went Strength Stacker pretty early. So just pathed here. I respect all of this. If you're a witch, it's different because you're getting spell damage from the get-go. You're going to completely destroy. You can, for example, go for dual wielding. Templar and Marauder, it's kind of eh. Shadow, same thing. I mean, it's just super easy to do. You can go for a leech early if you want to, for example, on a shadow for instant leech. You can even do that here if you really want to. But in general, this is just a template for people who already know what they're doing when twink leveling. Just maybe spice it up a little bit, not run deck stacker every single time. But more than just talking about Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation, if I want you to take anything away from this video, it is that you should really look out for some of these skills that are level 1, level 4, level 12. Because some of these some of these Transfigure Gems are just not made for that. They are completely busted. Like, for example, I mean, Caustic Garf Poison, you already know about. Penance Brand, then obviously Kinetic Bolt of Fragmentation. But there is many, many more depending on what you want to level. So I personally really like that because I just love taking the skill that I'm going to play from level one. For example, on the Kinetic Bolt, I just started and I had this nice progression curve. It's just way more fun than having to respect like 100 points, playing a completely different skill after I went out of deck stacking, right? Sure, depends on who you are. Maybe you don't care at all. That's fine. I'm just saying there's a lot more options out there and leveling can be a lot more fun if you wanted to.